All right. Um, so hello everyone. Good morning. Hope hope you're all doing good in this tough time. And our collaboration is on automatic identification of jumps and repeats in music performance. Uh, my name is Ruchit Agrawal. I'm at Queen Mary University of London, supervised by Professor Simon Dixon. And my partner is Louis Carvalho from Johannes Kepler University, supervised by Professor Gerhard Widmer. So let's get started. First of all, why is this an important problem to solve? So as we all probably know, repeats and jumps are an integral part of classical music performance. And identifying such deviations from the structure is crucial for efficient analysis of the performances. Um, now we, uh, in this collaboration, focus on the task of audio to score alignment, but this method could also be extended to other applications like uh, cross-modal retrieval or music editing. And this is an example of a repeat sign. So as you can see, it's, 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 it can be represented in quite a compact manner in the score domain for something which can take much longer, let's say, in the audio domain. So now we'll talk briefly about the challenges for this uh, task. So uh, we are working directly with the raw data, that is the scanned, uh, scanned images of sheet music. So it doesn't have all the annotations that we require for the experiments, and the ground truth is also not there. So we need the measure annotations and the uh, annotation of the jump and the repeat directives. Uh, so for that, we will need to employ OMR. Uh, and OMR is not very efficient. Uh, it's uh, the repeat systems. And apart from that, performers can add additional deviations, like ignoring some measures or ignoring some repeat signs and adding some new stand, some new passages uh, in Cadenza. And uh, especially in the practice scenario, this is quite possible to have multiple deviations and interruptions and then restarts. So now we'll quickly talk about the existing approaches. So there have been quite a few approaches to uh, tackle this task and we won't talk about all of them due to the time constraint just talk about the main ones so this in Im this image on the right side is just to show the how the distance matrix looks for uh, performance where there is a single repeat repeated section uh, so the classical dynamic time warping algorithm does not really handle structural differences since it computes a monotonically increasing alignment path and jump PTW is one interesting approach, uh, which is aimed at audio to score alignment. And it, it, how, what it does, it, it treats the score and the audio as sequences of blocks. Um, and they define block as um, a sequence of measures. And they split these, sequ these sequences of measures at the repeat and jump directives of different kinds. Uh, so they read the block boundaries, and they split this, the, the performance into blocks and the score. And they uh, kind of they make a list of all the points where potential jumps can happen. So one set of points uh, for the uh, source of the jumps, and one set of points for the target of the jumps. Uh, and there's needleman wunsch time warping algorithm, which is an extension of the needleman wunsch algorithm uh, uh, to allow for also tempered discrepancies between the score and the audio. Uh, actually, it is mainly for audio to audio alignment. So yeah, it allows for temp tempo di uh, discrepancies between the two audios. And uh, it allows, what it does, it, 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 it kind of skips the unmatchable sequences and unmatchable parts in the two sequences. So, uh, and it also uh, uh, introduces a way to, optimal, to optimally estimate the gap penalty parameter of gamma. Uh, and now we we'll briefly talk about the limitations of these two methods. So jump TTW, as I said, it uh, requires block boundaries, which are accurate at the flame level. So most likely these are to be manually corrected after some automatic OMR systems. And uh, it, since it only works with blocks, then it cannot handle deviations which are uh, within the block, for instance, skip measures also. Uh, and also it, since it uses chroma-based features, uh, progressions which are like sequences which are uh, two measures which are similar harmonic progression can be confused. Two blocks which have similar harmonic progressions can be confused. So, um, and the limitation of uh, needleman wunsch time warping is that, uh, like, I, like I mentioned, it, uh, it rests for the time where the unmatchable part is going on, so, but it doesn't jump to the previous section. So as you can see in the, 
right hand side diagram, uh, it, it, it doesn't jump back to the position from where the repeat has started. Uh, also, it does not favor jumps to the beginning or end of some structural units since it does not incorporate any score information. So, and also, since both the methods work with handcrafted features, there might be uh, challenges for them to adapt them to different domains. Uh, different domains, and we will we'll be using multimodal embeddings. And uh, Luis will talk about the proposed method. All right. Thanks, Richard. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right. So here are the steps of our proposed approach. Uh, first, as for the representation, we employ multimodal embeddings trained on audio and sheet image snippets in a way that corresponding snippets lie together in the embedding space. Could you go back to the, yeah, thank you. And on the right side, uh, you can see an example of two corresponding snippets of the MSMD, which is the data set we used for training the model. So um, with the embeddings of a given performance and its respective score, we can generate a distance plot, also known as distance or cost matrix. Then the measure positions in the score will be estimated using an OMR system. And the benefit of using this type of embeddings is that since they are not on the frame level, we suspect that they might work better with approximate measure and block detections, as opposed to chroma-based features. And the last uh, task will be to using the distance matrix and the measure positions to unroll the score according to the performance so we can have some sort of unrolled performed score. You can also see here an example of an unrolled score. Okay. So the work is in progress at the moment. And here we show an example of a bounding box detections around the measure blocks in a score using OMR. And with these boxes, we can estimate the coordinates of the measure lines in the score. As it can be seen, this model, uh, works quite well and successfully detected all blocks in the score. Okay, uh, here we can see two examples of uh, distance matrices using multimodal embeddings. We manually added repetitions to two recordings and computed the pairwise distances from the snippets to their respective scores. In the plot, the X axis represents the audio and the Y axis represents the score. And it's possible to see and notice the repetitions in the matrices, which are these dark diagonal lines. For the first piece on the left plot, two sections were repeated. So we can see two potential jumps. And for the second piece on the right plot, two sections were repeated twice. So we can uh, see four potential jumps. What we can see from here is that uh, this uh, multimodal embedding representation is uh, with this representation, it's possible to notice the difference in the structures, like we can see the jumps and repeats. But one limitation could be that, uh, for example, the resolution of the plots. Uh, so we plan to employ embeddings generated uh, with the network trained on smaller snippets, so we can have some fine grain uh, representation. Okay. Right, to conclude with some future steps, we, it's first uh, interesting to mention that we feel that we are in the very beginning, so there's too much, thing, much things to do. Uh, we first identified that the JMPW approach is the most suitable for our problem, so we first want to implement it and integrate the potential jumps also to the distance plot so we can visualize them on the score axis. And also we want to investigate uh, different OMR systems for the for the block and the repeat and jump science detection, and we want to investigate this also. Uh, we want to extend all measure uh, boundaries as potential jump points, but giving weights to repeat and jump science because although the performer could could jump to any block of the score, we it's most likely that this uh, would be the repeat and jump signs. And also, as mentioned before, there's a lack of annotated data for these purposes, so we want to curate more adequate data, preferably from real score and real order performances. And finally, once and if we have a fully functional system, 
we would, we would like to test it in a realistic scenario, like performing score following while your musician practice is playing and he or she might skip measures, ignore repeats and so on. All right, uh, that's, uh, this is pretty much everything from our side and thanks for the attention.